The point of the Sabbath is our rest in God through Jesus Christ. So it's a day for us to especially enjoy and grow in that rest. Truth in 10-ish in 3, 2, 1. What happened to the Sabbath day? That is the question which confronts us when we get to the opening words of Genesis 2, which we're up to in this series. We read this, Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. And on the seventh day, God finished his work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and made it holy, because on it God rested from all his work that he had done in creation. Now, we say a lot about the six days of creation, and rightly so. But I think there is a place to talk about the seven days of creation, because in Genesis 1 and 2, God saw fit to describe seven days in that creation account. And the seventh day is important. It's a day when creation was finished. And God could, on that day, declare that the whole realm of creation was very good. And we saw that last time. If you remember, uh, that means no sin and no death. Those imposters which God is against and which God is removing uh, as he brings us to a new creation, those imposters hadn't yet arrived in creation. There was no fall. There was no corruption. There's no sin. There's no evil or oppression or decay or death or iniquity or filth or pain. Rather, there is a state existing which God intended, a state of peace and harmony between God himself in all his glory and goodness and his creation. In particular, a peace and a harmony between God and humankind who perfectly bear his image, which means that they knew God. And you see that in Colossians 3.10. There's a perfect knowledge, a perfect harmony of relationship and therefore, we are radiating his holiness, imaging his holiness, and acting according to his righteousness. That is a perfect state. And the whole condition of things on this day is summed up with that very rich and beautiful word, rest. Rest. Um, a soul rest, to borrow from the New Testament, as we're about to see. A rest from our strivings towards God, our strivings without God. A peace, a peace that is ours as God intended in perfect relationship and goodness with him. This is what all things were made for. It is the grand conclusion. It is commemorated by the creation of a day of rest, the seventh day. But it was short-lived. There was a fall and God went back to work. And to explain why I say it that way, I want to highlight an incident in John's Gospel, chapter 5, where Jesus heals a man on the Sabbath day, on the day of rest. He pushes back the effects of this fall on that day. And that upsets the legalists who say, oh, well, there's all these codes and all the rest of it as existed in the Jewish system at the time. Uh, some was legit, some wasn't. Uh, and he replies to their upset with an interesting phrase. He says, my father is working until now and I am working. And you notice the contrast immediately with Genesis 2. God finished his work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day. But then Jesus says, well, since then, God has been working, and I am working. Especially, specifically, he has been at work to redeem this fallen world, to restore the rest for which it was made, for which we were made. And he announced that great work on the very day of the fall, Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, when he spoke a word of promise that he would send a saviour. And scripture tells us how he from that time forwards has worked to move all of history toward the fulfilment of the grand plan to restore his rest through the saviour of the world. And in this regard, hear how Jesus said, well, I am that person. And he said it in Matthew chapter 11, on the Sabbath day, he says, Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. On the Sabbath, Jesus is using Sabbath language and he is applying it to himself. He says, you want to know the meaning of this rest 
that the Sabbath was instituted to, to, to remind us of that there was this rest at one time on the seventh day. He says, in effect, you're going to find that rest in me. I am the way to rest for your souls. I am the way to the true rest which the Sabbath is pointing and that teaching is reinforced in Hebrews chapter 4, verses 1 through 10. And I can only summarize it, but I encourage you to go and read it for yourself. But here's some summary points. The writer actually quotes Genesis saying, And God rested on the seventh day from all his works. And he goes on, There remains a Sabbath rest for the people of God. Okay, so it's still pointing to something. And then he says, We who believe have entered that rest. So although the world is a fallen world, and that rest was totally interrupted. Now in Jesus Christ, we can still find that rest for which we were created. And it makes perfect sense because he undoes all the disruptions that came after day seven. He undoes all the disruptions of the fall. Sin, it's conquered in him. Death, it's defeated in him. Relationship to God, reconciled in him. In him, we are reconciled to that relationship that we had before. So, we who are weary and burdened, with the curses of sin and the fall. We who are enslaved to troubles and strivings and restlessness between ourselves and God, we find in Jesus Christ true rest for our souls. And we find in Him the true rest which prevailed on the seventh day. Colossians 2.16 says this, Let no one pass judgment on you in questions of food and drink or with regards to a festival or a new moon or a Sabbath. These are a shadow of the things to come, but the substance belongs to Christ. Now, I have failed to address one thing. If the Sabbath speaks of the Lord Jesus Christ, and we do believe, we are those who have believed, Hebrews 4, and we're being brought into God's rest because of that, do we still need to observe the Sabbath day? And I need to be careful in addressing this because I want to remain non-denominational uh, and I also don't want to overstate things which are not overstated in Scripture. But I want to make a few guideline points. First of all, Sabbath is a creation ordinance. It's also a ceremony. It was part of the ceremonial law. And it's also in the Ten Commandments, which is God's moral law. And as we just were reminded of in Colossians, um, that which belongs to the Old Testament ceremonies is fulfilled and swallowed up in Christ. And so we can set that ceremony aside and look to Jesus Christ instead. And that's kind of what I have just said. But it's not so easily set aside when it comes to the Ten Commandments, because the other nine are still just as valid as ever. What about the Fourth Commandment? Remember the Sabbath day. Um, it's also not so easily set aside when it comes to creation ordinances. I mean, this is the fabric of the order of the world God made when it was very good that there's six days work, one day rest. Um, and so which bits are ceremony and which bits are enduring? Like how should we order our lives? Regarding the exact day of the week, it's clear that the early church really treated the first day of the week, uh, which was the day that Christ was raised from the dead as their day to meet together. And some people have called this the institution of the Sunday Sabbath, as opposed to the former Saturday Sabbath in the Jewish system. Well, what should we do? Well, here is a minimum standard, as far as I can assess it, right? Which doesn't go too far into denominational distinctions, but a minimum standard for us all to think about. Um, there is a rhythm in God's very good creation order, which is those six days of work and one day of rest. So it would be ideal to observe in our lives a day in seven as a day of rest. But what is meant by rest? You say, is that a day to do nothing? Do I get to sit on the couch and stare at the wall? No, nope, that's not what the rest was about. The point of the Sabbath is our rest in God through Jesus Christ. So it's a day for us to especially enjoy and grow in that rest. For example, it's a day in which we prioritize spiritual activities. Now, in my job, I'm often working hard on Sunday because I have speaking obligations and travel obligations, which very often are focused on Sundays in different churches and parts of the world. So I often take another day of the week as well, which I call my reading day. And on that day, I study scripture and I write and I reflect and I go walking and I spend time praying. 
And these are things which we can allocate special time and priority to. Of course, they're things that are part of the fabric of our daily life anyway. But special time, special priority uh, to these things on our day of rest. We can enjoy what we have in the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm going to quote again that scripture which might guide us in this. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Or from Hebrews 4, we who have believed enter that rest. And I must repeat, of course, that famous quote, which some might already have thought of from St. Augustine. He said, you have made us for yourself, O Lord, and our hearts are restless until they find their rest in thee.